good evening uh, welcome to matchni free webinar today uh, once again we are talking about adverse child childhood experience the second part uh, the speaker uh, is mr matt bostin is from california usa and he is the mentor for emotional in intelligence based on eq for peace usa is an organization uh, mainly uh, working for emotional intelligence all over world particularly in india also they are doing uh, many webinars and many classrooms and mentoring for emotional intelligence and he is doing for uh, the last 35 years i think it is from his childhood itself he is doing anyway on behalf of you all i welcome uh, mr matt for uh, the second session on adverse childhood experience welcome matt thank you thank you thanks dr s i appreciate you uh, inviting me back again um you know, folks that i know thank you for uh, coming back again and listening to me again that's pretty cool it feels good that you'd spend your time cuz i know you have better things to do or important things to do so um i am uh, i talked last saturday about aces um it was kind of uh i don't know it hit me that how important they are um i also was elected to the board of acesmatter.org um because um and i am taking my important time uh, to work with them because it do, they do matter they do matter and I, the more i look into it the more they matter um so i guess basically uh the, the premise is that the worst things that have happened to you as a child the more trouble you're going to have as an adult right no kidding <laughs> big shocker right but the, what I, what's impressive about it is that is the prevalence of it how they have gotten the score these very very simple scores to start an assessment of problems and prediction of problems so we can do something about it hopefully maybe someday hopefully we can do something about it now what i want to talk to you guys today about is not so much what they found but what we can do what we could do about it and i have a suggestion and i would like your input actually before i get started on it um because it's been something that's been going around inside me for a long time and i would like to uh, discuss that with some of you um and so i will share my thoughts on that so let's get started i'm going to share my powerpoint and i'm going to start off with well let me just start off with the agenda today i would like to discuss what aces mean um, um i'm going to go through it real quickly because we talked about it last time but i'll go it's not complicated it's not rocket science it's very simple stuff but it's incredibly powerful and the the impact of what it means is incredible <laughs> and that's why i'm here doing the best and this is why i am doing the research on it because it's super important says i and many others <laughs> So what um this is we're talking about trauma we're talking about uh, adverse meaning bad childhood experiences stuff that happened to us as a kid how it is still affecting us as an adult and how it does affect us as a as a teenager as an adult it affects our thoughts our feelings our actions and um and our body it turns out that uh, the more bad things that happen to you emotionally as a child the more likely you are going to have severe medical problems physical problems as an adult that's kind of a big deal <laughs> that's kind of a big deal and you're probably going to die sooner that's kind of a big deal because of whatever happened to you as a child emotionally it's going to affect you physically that is a big deal right so that's that's what get my attention that uh, gets me up early in the morning um so um i want to talk about a 
plan for creating something that we could provide for people. People don't know how to deal with their emotions. They have no idea, in my opinion, in my experience. They have no idea. Most people, we never talk about it. Never, never, never talk about this stuff. We don't talk about it. We don't learn about it in school. We don't um, deal with it in our homes. We don't, we better not deal with it at work. So we don't know. And it's incredible how much we don't know, in my opinion, it's so much. And so we need to start from the very, very basics and teach people. And um, that's a that that's a huge task. <laughs> that's a huge task. When I say people, I'm talking about pretty much everybody. Most people don't have any idea. And we who do know, in my opinion, are, are uh, responsible, responsible to teach those who do not know. So that's what I'm doing here. ACEs, let's talk about them real quick. Adverse childhood experiences. They're extreme stressors, a.k.a. trauma that happen in your childhood. Six out of 10 people, there's, oh, so. Um, there's eight, there's 10 scores. I, maybe I should, these aren't in order. There's 10 questions of stuff that happened to you as a child. What they're finding is six out of 10 people have at least one of these um, potential traumatic extreme sensors, stressors as a child. And I'll show them to you in just a second. And one out of six people have at least four, which is bad, which means you, a lot of, you had a tough childhood. You had a tough childhood. They break them down into three groups, things that happened to you, neglect, and then household stuff that was going on inside in your household. So um, so we what they're finding is that the higher rates of ACEs are associated with poor health and outcomes, meaning you're a mess <laughs> as an adult, and substance abuse, antisocial behavior, et cetera. It's affecting us both emotionally and physically. It's incredible. And behaviorally, it's incredible. And that is basically saying that, you know, the more stuff happened to you as a child, the worse it's going to be as an adult. Um, and but but what's a big deal about that? A, that's not really uh uh, earth shattering in itself it's kind of like you obvious but what's cool about it is that the um the the governments and the bigger agencies and criminal justice and um the surgeon general we're talking about medical are getting involved and 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 they're doing it based on these ace scores which is so an assessment tool so it's a start it's a start but it opens the conversation because like i said most people don't know and so they don't know about emotions and they don't know that they don't know <laughs> and they're not looking for them. And so this kind of gives you like, oh, whoa, oh, OK. So it kind of opens your eyes and it makes it so that um, the these uh, bigger agencies are using this as a tool to get people more aware, which is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, in my opinion. Awareness is the first key to change awareness. we got to open our eyes and our heart first in the first key to change. And this is allows us to get started. It starts the conversation, which is great, 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 great stuff, in my opinion. Um, the original ACE studies were done, uh, it was called the relationship of child abuse and household dysfunction to many of the leading causes of death. It was done by a hospital system in California. People who've experienced four or more categories of childhood exposure compared to those who had none are four to 12 times more likely to have severe um, behavioral and medical problems as an adult. All right. I'm going to whip through these because it's kind of the same stuff as what I said last time, some of it. And you get the idea, right? There are huge numbers. 125 million American adults have had at least one traumatic experience in their life and um, 52 million have had three or more. Wow. Right. If you had a tough childhood, you're going to have a tough adulthood. Here's the categories. These are the basic 10 questions. Were you psychologically abused? Were you physically abused? Were you sexually abused? Did you have neglect, et cetera? Right. Um, so what they're finding is they're increasing. These are these are studies are showing the connection. This is where the, the money comes in and this is where people get excited and this is where it gets in, it gets uh, real, it gets real and it gets out there in the world, right? It's hap it, um, They're attaching ACEs to crime, to incarceration, to health care costs. That's where big bucks are. Um, that's my day job is, is a health care uh, organization and we're massive worldwide and doing very, very well because people all of a sudden since COVID are very concerned about their health. 
right? The demand went up, skyrocketed, just like security went skyrocketed after 9-11. Um, after COVID, health care has skyrocketed in, in, uh, in demand. Now they're attaching, they're connecting these ACEs to healthcare costs, and that's where big bucks are, huge. Uh, alcohol, alcoholism, substance abuse, domestic violence, childhood abuse, mental illnesses, mental health is one of the more, more popular subjects now, which I'm very happy about. <laughs> I'm sorry that it, it is so popular because it's because it's such a problem, but it or and it is yay that it's more popular that it's people are talking about it that it's more uh, mainstream that it's more of a mass market we see it now i in in the united states on tv pretty regularly on commercials and such and the, and the guys all the pro players have it on their back they'll have something since um black lives matter they'll have something like one of the guys i took a picture his back of his helmet nfl player in the back of his helmet said uh choose love i'm like oh this is an nfl player national uh, football pro football choose love i'm like oh that is cool i took a picture when they when they span backwards it was fantastic i was like they're talking about it people are and it's becoming more mainstream you should see guys on tv crying sometimes or being upset not just anger not just anger but actual real feelings <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. I love it. It's it's uh, it's happening. It's moving slowly, but but it's moving in the right direction, in my opinion. Um, so you get the idea here. So these are the actual ACE questions. If you want to take the, que the quiz yourself, these are the actual questions. Before you're 18, I'm not going to read them all to you, but you get um, you can uh, record later and and come back and take this take the questions there were originally 10 they'd added these bottom the bottom five later um so some of the statistics are based on the 10 not the 15 um but it doesn't matter you get the idea uh the more of these more times you say yes the bigger warning warning right <laughs> look out um so we're connecting uh well i already said all that um so i mentioned last time that i that i was told about the scotland violent Redu violence reduction unit um they had cut murders in half glasgow scotland was known as the hard, um, highest rate of, of murders in the world uh, and they there was knives mostly they were using knives i've been reading about it this morning um and they cut the cut it in half by teaching the kids. Here's one of, here. This is from them. They said, um, and um, you know, you can't probably can't read all this, but you don't need to. Um, it's talking about a safer Scotland to reduce violence. And one of the biggest things that I wanted to point out was in the middle down here. It says data collection. What's the problem? Well, one of the main tools they use for data collection was ACE ACE questions, the ACE study which I thought was pretty cool. And so that's kind of where they're starting. So how bad was it for you kids, you guys who already got arrested? They're studied, studied the kids who already got arrested. And they um, then they uh, try to find out what's going on with them. And then they took those kids and helped them help others. They were helping them help others. <laughs> and that worked super well, just like, uh, like uh, the 12 step programs. It works amazingly well. And, um, super simple um but uh it's not easy to implement <laughs> and it's a change in change and in, in a lot of change so anyway so this is the ace scores uh, are the basis of this program uh by the way sadly i have to say that i read about the program it was about five years ago um, in Scotland, this particular program and where they reduced the murders, um, it was government funded and the government said, OK, now we got it going. It's working really good. Somebody take over and nobody took over and it got to be a political thing. And so it's not happening anymore. And they went from I didn't write it down, but they went from a I forget the what, the exact term, but they said um, basically caring in order to uh, to cause change to force to cause change they now search people more they tripled the the penalty for carrying a knife um that kind of stuff they went to more aggressive rather than more emotional and and guess what happened <laughs> it didn't go very well and it's gone back up again and um so it was it didn't wasn't sustained unfortunately it's not doesn't mean it's not sustainable but it was not sustained so i was sad to see that um this exa great example was was a good example, but it ended, unfortunately. So 
anyway anyway uh we know this aces could have lasting effect i'll just whip through these here's the 15 of them um they could affect uh, al uh alcoholism and antidepressants and domestic violence and smoking there notice the big thing here is to notice the lines this is a direct relationship the more ace scores you have the more likely you're going to have these problems and and it's shown over and over and over hundreds of thousands of people have taken this test and they're making direct connection between this stuff it's wild see notice the graphs are nice and smooth and up and up the more you have the more you look out the more you're in trouble all right same thing same thing this is worker impaired worker performance so it uh, applies at work it applies at home it applies to medically it applies everywhere right so um the impact of childhood trauma um oh here's the medical ones here's some of the severe um uh diseases that people have same thing it goes amazingly connected to uh emotional to the aces aces all right um so la 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 let's go on see here's what it is here's what here's bottom line is what we've got to do different okay so now i'm going to switch gears from what's the problem to what i think we can do about it all right and you guys can give me some feedback this is um it's not new ideas i thought of these were a long time ago but i still have not been able to make them happen this is what i think that we need to do uh based on my experience okay uh we got to figure out how to at least become aware of our past and how that has affected us and how we can change how we don't have to do it the way they it was done to us this is showing that this you know grandpa and dad were did what they did and they weren't great parents and they didn't know how to deal with their emotions and they didn't know how to uh they weren't aware just like we're not aware and it that gets passed down and this guy in the middle is going wait a minute i'm not cheating my kids this way i'm going to do it different and so he had that's tough that's tough this guy in the middle that's the toughest spot it's easy to do what was done to you it's hard to do it different it is really hard to do it different but uh, if prison and welfare systems can be built in preparation for people with aces right Pre as a as a reaction we can do we can do that for healing communities we can be more proactive so one of the things is to know your score okay so we need to teach people about their emotions they have no idea in my opinion they have no idea they don't know even the very basics, the very, very basics. Now, check these out. This is what I would like your input on. So some of the very basic things we're trying to teach people. We have thoughts and we have feelings, not just thoughts. We talk about and we learn about and we just, and we uh, we concentrate on and focus on our thoughts, right? Growing up and we're a left brain logical society and our education is based on our left brain on how to get a job, how to do reading, writing, arithmetic. Those are left brain stuff, right? Mostly. We don't pay much attention to our right brain. We have feelings. We have, that's where creativity and our senses and our imagination is all in our right brain. We don't talk about that. Music, art, uh, sports, that kind of dance, that kind of stuff, um, singing, all that stuff gets the first stuff to get cut. We don't have, we don't work on that side of our right, our brain much. We're focused on the left side. We're doing good on the left side. I'm saying we need to build up the right side. We need to balance them. It's not that one is more important than the other. It's that we need to balance them both. And so we have thoughts and we have feelings, right? We and our thoughts actually create our feelings most of the time, not saying all the time. A lot of times feelings can come first, but a majority of the time, the stuff that we can do something about is our thoughts. If we think we're being abused and we're going to feel yucky, if we think that, well, you know, that wasn't that big a deal, we're not going to feel quite as yucky, right? Our thoughts create our feelings. And we choose our thoughts. We choose our thoughts and we can change our thoughts. I don't think that most kids, most people have any idea that they are as much in control of themselves as they think. They think that um, they did it to me. You made me angry. You hurt my feelings. You uh, you did what you did, right? You did, and that is true. Those are all true. They affect our feelings. They affect our thoughts, but they do not control us. We do. We do. 
we get to choose. No matter what is happening outside of us, we get to choose what happens inside of us. We have the power. We have that power. That's a big deal. I don't think most kids know that i've had people many many people over the years where we i've told that to them and they're like ah <laughs> it's kind of like wow i did i never thought of that before did you know that you can be smart with your heart that you can be deal with your fear and your anger and your sadness and all that stuff in in educated ways in smart ways that work for you and they're like no i had no idea i've never thought of that before i never thought of it before and that's a bad thing you guys that's a bad thing so we need to bring it up we need to bring it up it's called emotional responsibility and what we finding is that that one thing that one thing is the tipping point it's the tipping point between um, whether you're going to do good or whether you're not, <laughs> it really is. If you think that they did it to you, if it's the school or your parents or the economy or the government or all, the, all that stuff that are making you feel what you feel, then they're in control. You're a victim victim. You become a whiner and a blamer and a victim, and it's not, not going to go well. However, if you can take that leap, and this is what we need to get across to people, if we can, you can take that one leap that says, I am in charge of my thoughts and my feelings and my decisions and my actions and my beliefs and my values, all that stuff, mine, they're mine. I made them, I made them. No matter what's happening outside, I get to have the power to choose what happens inside. That is a big deal, in my opinion. That's the tipping point. That's what we got to get across to people. And they don't know that. We, they don't know that. Um, that one thing can change everything. If you, uh, if you, yeah, if you believe you did it to me, they did it to me, they are in charge. If you believe you did it to yourself, then you're in charge. How cool is that, right? That gives you the power. That gives you the freedom. That gives you the choice. That gives you the ability to do better. It's very, very, very good news, in my opinion. So if we pay attention to our thoughts and our feelings, this gives us tons of good information that makes us better informed, less reactive, more responsive, better decision-making, make mature, effective, and personally and socially conscious actions. So it's all based on that EQ. So if we EQ leads to ER, which is emotional responsibility, which leads to personal responsibility and social responsibility, and hopefully someday, some peace, <laughs> someday, some peace. We're working with people's core. This is kind of the basis of what people are about. We teach them where we go back to the beginning, teach them how this works, how this works, their thoughts, feelings, pictures, sounds, smells, um, before they did the crime in the first place, we're trying to work with some of that stuff. What drives you, what emotions work, what they, how do you manage yourself? It gives you choices, right? These are just some kind of rough notes for myself. So. Um, um, so they're open for discussion. <laughs> the ACEs are the link between physical and emotional. They're the predictors of bad, violent, antisocial behavior. Predictors, that's a big deal in itself. The more ACEs you have, the more likely you're going to be a yucky person <laughs> and you're going to have problems and you're going to have problems. Um, when life treats you mean, you better get mean right back, right? It kind of makes sense that people do what they do. Uh, this is with, uh, more related to the violence part of it, but uh, violence begets violence, right? If that's what happened to you, then that's what you think you're supposed to do. And that's what you do, right? Because you only have one choice. That's what I saw. That's what I felt. That's what I experienced. That's what I better do now, right? That's what I better do now. And so they feel like they would only have one choice. If we then, if we can teach people that they are at choice on how they react, and that is a choice, but it's not the choice, then they can make better choices and they can make take better actions, right? That one basic thing, that one basic thing can change everything, in my opinion. Um, our trauma is so loud and huge inside of us that we can't hear much else. Uh, we, at least understanding that you are in charge of you emotionally immediately gives you choices and some freedom. Um, uh, EQ gives us choices. ER, EQ gives us ER, right? Knowledge that emotional responsibility gives us a power to manage our own lives. Without it, we tend to see the world as having very few choices. We react to way we are treated and we reenact the world that we were that we lived that we lived 
It doesn't, it is reality, but it doesn't have to be the only reality. Uh, local lo, lack of emotional awareness, um, it's only uh, makes it so that you feel like you only have one choice. And because your emotions are so big, we say that um, if you're when your emotions get high, your logic goes down. It's kind of a seesaw thing. When your emotions get high, your logic goes down, right? It's called amygdala hijack. Uh, Daniel Goleman um, um, created that term a long time ago. So, and it basically means that your emotions are so big that you can't even think. You can't even think. And so much of crime and violence is based on that. How long did it take you for to do your crime? Uh, 30 seconds. How long are you paying for it? 30 years, <laughs> right? That kind of thing. It happened fast and it was impulsive and our emotions took over. Your logic goes down and boom, you did something that was horrible, right? And you can't... You, you, you know what I mean? It got it got bad quickly, right? So we can teach people that they have choices, and we can teach people that they have um, that they can calmly wait just six seconds or count to ten or whatever. There's things you can do to settle things, and so you don't necessarily react. You respond, right? Respond means you put some thought into it a little bit at least, and you are, re are you're responding to the situation, not just reacting, right? Based on your emotions and your traumas that are inside of you. But they get imprinted in us, right? We get when you when it happens and things get triggered, um, you go right back to the pictures and sounds and smells that are inside of us, and we just do what we learned, what we what we lived. And it doesn't go well a lot of the time. So, so now what? So what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Um, um, if we have high ACEs and I'm like, you know what? I, this is funny because in the ACEs matter, I told you I became a board member. Most of those people have some, a lot of ACEs. Wow. Some of them have 10 out of 10. Some of the people, the, the leader had 10 out of 10. I'm like, oh, that's so, such a horrible childhood compared to mine. I, I'm not saying mine was peachy, but it was peachy compared to them. And it doesn't matter though, because I'm saying, you know what? If you have high ACEs, if you have four or six or eight or ten yikes but it doesn't matter if you if even if you have one it doesn't matter if you have any you still had trauma as a child stuff trauma just means that something happened to you that was huge thoughts it created huge thoughts and huge emotions in you right that could be anything that could be any event it doesn't have to be this horrible ugly thing but it may have been it may not have been it doesn't matter still stuff happened to you still had emotional turmoil as a kid because you got it's when you make changes and when things affect you and you decide stuff about life that goes that you keep with you that it's any any can thing can be traumatic um so what do we need to do teach eq we need to promote we need to uh have peers and pros what that means is um um where uh, peers are people that are not professionals. They're just helping. They're volunteers. They're people that are, um, uh, you know, been there, done that kind of thing, and are here to help out. Pros are people that you pay for it. So they're they're experts and people, professionals that you pay for it. So we'd have both. Uh, we need to have mentors and mentees. This is a, um, I, I guess I jumped ahead of myself. What I'm suggesting is a website, a web, a new website that is um, worldwide, that is gives the emotional support and guidance that we need. We need to be able to teach people how to do emotional intelligence from scratch at all levels. Some people have no idea. Some people have a little bit of idea. Actually, a lot of people now have a little bit of an idea. They're going, wow, I've heard of emotional intelligence. It sounds good. How do I do that? <laughs> I've never, what do I do now? What do I, okay, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm sold on it. What do I do? And that's a big question, right? That's a big question. So A is people that are not aware at all, unconsciously incompetent, we call them. And B is people that are aware, but they don't know what to do next. That's conscious consciously incompetent we call it which means okay i know that i don't know about this talk to me what do i do what's what's next kind of thing and then next step of course is consciously competent which is where you go oh i oh i see okay i can do this different i can do that oh, okay all right and you start learning how to do it different and step four eventually maybe hopefully is you become unconsciously competent which means you just do it you don't even have to think about it anymore you just it's a habit and you just have integrated it into your life so 
I think we need a website that that um, allows people to do this, that helps people through the process and and opens your eyes and takes you by the hand and walks you through the process of how this works. Um, we uh, we and get people involved with each other get people involved with each other we can't teach everybody we can't support everybody we can't but we can get people who uh, are learning to reach out to someone else right it's the connection and it, the cycle um we, there were people that are to get help i call it um here's how you do eq this would be people that are wanting help which would hopefully be most everybody <laughs> and then there's people to give help those are people who um who are ready to help somebody else it doesn't mean you have your whole act together and you're perfect now but it does mean that you're caring enough to help somebody else or to be there for people etc I'm saying that one of the biggest gifts, one of the biggest gifts that we can give another human being is to shut up and listen to them, <laughs> is to shut up and listen to them, really, is to be, be, let people talk, let people emote, let people discover what's going on inside, let people vent, let not complain and then and just listen to that that's not it what are you feeling what are you feeling let's deal with the feelings right doesn't matter what the details are doesn't matter what the events are it does we don't have to name names and start you know uh, getting back at people we don't have to do that in fact we can teach how to not do revenge how to not hurt people you can you can scream at him you can say exactly what you need to say you can do whatever you know act and act it out even if you want to without them even knowing it without them knowing it you are getting the emotions out of you in a way that is healing so that you don't have to be violent so that you don't have to hurt them so you don't have to cut off your relationship with them you just get the emotions you deal with the emotions inside of you because that's where they are that's where the problem is now okay all right now i can think now i can talk to people now i can have a real relationship now i can be an adult about it and be mature but first sometimes i gotta vent a little bit and uh, get dump some of this stuff because it's built up and i'm i'm mad i'm hurt i'm pissed all right all right deal with it feel it right and let it go and then let it go um, lack of EQ is dangerous. It really is. People not knowing how to deal with their emotions is a dangerous thing. We need to teach pretty much everybody. We need to teach everybody. And they don't know and they don't know that they don't know. So they're not looking. So we've got to um, we've got to uh, get their attention. At the very least, we need to inform people that they're in charge, not the outside world. They can change what they don't like inside of them or that isn't working inside of them, they can change it. You can change it. You can change you. You can adjust things. You can have a thought and completely ignore it and then have another thought that you like, that you go, oh, you know what? I don't like that thought. I'm going to have a different thought. And then you can think a different thought. And then that changes everything. And you can change it. Spin it to win it, I call it. Spin it to win it. We That changes things because I can adjust. I have the power to change things inside of me. It's not, they didn't do it to me and I'm not stuck with these emotions. I can change them. That's a big deal. You could do it. And no matter what you think and feel, you can, you don't have to react. You don't have to act in a negative way. You can have negative feelings and thoughts and all day long if you want to. But when you act them out, that's when it's, that's when it's trouble starts. That's when we get in trouble, right? That's when it gets real. That's when there's consequences. When you act them out, people don't know this. People don't know this. Uh, they don't know this, and it's really, really important that we teach them. They can open up. They can care. If you can deal with your negative emotions, if you can deal with your negative emotions, there just isn't that much that life can throw at you that you can't handle you can open up you can care you can be loving you can do things differently you can uh, um, um, treat your kids different than you were treated you can do things different um, but you've got to be able to deal with your negative emotions and you got to at least even know what they're called and needs at least be able to identify them and at least be aware of them first right first we got to be aware first so what we need to do is teach people about themselves and about emotion, their emotions first to get it started. And then we need to teach them how to teach others. We need to spread the word. Each one teach one EQ. We cannot hit everybody. Um, we can't. 
There's no, I don't think, and we certainly can't do it fast enough. So we need to teach people how to teach people about how their, their emotions. Um, so we provide a super safe place, safety, safety, safety for emotions. We got to create a very, very safe environment. Um, and, and actually, I didn't do a slide on this, but what I want it to be is a membership site. And there, I wrote a whole thing on why it needs to be a membership site. Um, a membership, people got to... Uh, um, have some skin in the game, if you will, some uh, something that they put in to be involved. Um, it is a family membership where they uh, they um, become a member. You become part of the family. You're joining consciously, joining a new family consciously. You you were born into a family. That's okay. All right, whatever. And that might not have gone very well, but you can choose a new family on purpose, and you can join them. Right. And it also, this is kind of wild, but it needs to be membership based because if people are not being cool, if people are not being safe, we need to have the ability to kick them out. <laughs> we do. We got to keep making it be a safe place. We can work with people and help them see what they're doing and that sort of thing. But we also need to create safety. And in order to do that, we need for, to be able to keep people out who are not being safe, who are not playing fair, who are not being nice. They're not. And so. So that's a big deal. Um, we be hang out with people who care, people we can connect and learn and grow together. Connect is a very, very huge deal. Uh, belonging and fitting in and being a member of and being a, in a family is a very big deal for us humans. We're, we're social beings. Um, and so connection is huge. Uh, learning and growing together um, is a big deal. Instruction, education, and guidance at all levels. Emergency services. I was picking the other day, and this is really, um, I think, is super important. When emotions are really high, when the violence is getting ready to start, that we need to have a place like where people can go. Um, they they go, oh, just starting to, and they get online and they go, get on, log on real quick and go. I and you hit this emergency big red button or something. You go, I need I need some help now. And you go, what? And someone get on the screen and go, what? And you go, I'm pissed. And they go, well then yell and just ah, and help them. Ah, what's the matter? What's going on? And don't don't you don't even have to use a bunch of words. Just let yourself scream for a minute. Or just growl for a minute. Clench your fist. Come on, go go go. And don't hit anything and don't break anything and don't hurt anybody. Just be mad for a minute. Come on. And then and let them do it. And whew, or or they got really hurt and you do cry and or you do sadness, whatever it is. That's emergency services, what they need right this minute. And you help them get through the emotion and help them settle it down a little bit and feel it to heal it, like I say, and, and make that available. And then go, okay, you're doing all right. You're like, yeah, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> See ya. All right. <laughs> See ya. That's cool. Don't be cool, right? Yeah. So we can we can um, have a places that people can deal with their big emotions right now. And we can have, I call them emotional processing. This is the workshops that we've been doing for 30 something years. We help people go back to their childhood and get the big, big anger, big sadness, big fear that people have been carrying their whole lives and ah, let that out of your body, please. Your body does not want to carry that around anymore. That's what causes the big pain and the big medical problems as an adult is that our body gets stuck carrying around this crap inside of them and it's poisonous and it's debilitating and it's awful and it does and it's optional. It does not need to happen. We do not need to carry all this negative emotion around in our bodies. Um, the only reason we do is because we keep it there our judgments our opinions our um uh, our secrecy all that kind of stuff our inability our unawareness uh, our cluelessness all keeps it there so that it gets stays in our body and it rots and it and it breaks us down it breaks us down and it causes dis-ease in our body not ease dis-ease not peace uh, the lack of peace so we can help people process through their emotions. Um, this is not power tables. It's supposed to be poker tables. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever played poker on um, uh, online. You get you join a, a um, table. There's like eight people at your table, right? And you join this table, and you then you can talk to 
if, if there's an empty chair and then you could talk to those people and you play against each other, right? Well, we could do the same thing with, uh, the, with these processing rooms. You have one moderator in the room, a leader, and then the other people get in there, come join the room for a while and go, all right, I got something I need to talk about. And you go, okay. And the other people support them and such. And you help people deal with their emotions, help them deal with them in real time. It's pretty cool. And you could have a bunch of groups going on all at the same time. It'll get up a lot of people at the same time. It's really cool. Uh, so peers and pros. And um, I think that most of this stuff, we can't teach people how to deal with their emotions exactly. We have to, you bring it out of people. We, we bring it out. What do you, how do you do this? What's it like for you? Your emotions are different than mine. They're, they're basically the same, but what goes on inside of you is what goes, you know, what it's you, it's you, you're different than me and that's okay. That's cool. How does it work for you? You need to explore you and you need to identify and become aware and accept and all that stuff inside of you. I can't do that for you and I can't teach you that stuff. I can teach you to do it, but not, not do it. You got to do it. Um, so um, so a lot of how to deal with this stuff, we're not going to know how to deal with it. We ask, how do you guys deal with it? What do you do to get help? Where do you go to get help? What do you do when you get upset? You know, that kind of stuff where we um, where we are, where all the members are providing how they do it or input from their side. What has worked for you? What's your favorite books? What are your favorite videos? What are you, um, where, where do you go? You know, what do you, what do you do? And that's working for you. And people can share that. We, we can't do all of it. We can get it started, um, but we don't need the members to, uh, to supply content. So uh, <laughs> this was in here from last time. Uh, we have thoughts and feelings. We have choices. Yeah. So anyway, so, um, so aces matter a lot. The, what happened to you as a child is a big deal. Um, it affects us today and it affects people on a big level. Um, we need to, this is a wonderful way to assess and to get started and to start the conversation and to get people aware of how bad it might be. And then we can, uh, I think we can do stuff with it. And that's the big question is what do we do? What do we do with all these emotions? All right. People don't know how to deal with their emotions how do we get them how do we get them to get them aware how do we make people aware how do we this become a uh, mass or uh, you know in the in the main mainstream media it's getting there slowly slowly i don't know how it's going in india it's slowly getting there in the united states i'm happy about that um, but I'm also looking for positives. And so, you know, that's just how I do. <laughs> we call it positive mental health. That's why it's called positive mental health. So, so um, I'm open for suggestions or input on uh, what I was sharing. And I'm hoping that you guys can um, take, know that emotions matter more than we ever imagined and can take that further with, for you, with you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. It's a wonderful speech. Uh, really, uh, there are some uh, special uh, topics, really, uh, once again, we want to emphasize uh, that you are taught like that, AC, that is a link between uh, psychology and emotion, emotional, psychology, sorry, physiology and emotional. And uh, yep. there are, there is some, there should be some change in reaction and it makes to response more. And more, uh, more ACE means more improper behavior. And our trauma is yeah. so loud and irritating. So uh, EQ means that leads to emotional response. So there can be some amygdala, a hijack will be there. Uh, there is lack of logic uh, acceptance. And what we want to do is how to do EQ, how to work on EQ and how to teach EQ. So that for that we have we have to teach uh, particularly children that we they have choice and uh, again they have they can change also we can assure them so thank you sir thank you very much it's a wonderful talk thank you anybody can uh, okay uh, we're gonna go sir please okay Matt okay the talk was hey. very interesting Hi. as usual and uh, I would like to share yeah. certain <laughs> facts. So, thank you. That may be what you call an eye opening experience for. Is adverse childhood experiences not always bad, especially in India? Yeah. I'm going to share number 
Nearly 30% of the member of parliament, they have criminal background, criminal record. And then the study okay. shows that okay. is candidates with a criminal record, the chance of winning is 15%. Candidates without any criminal record, the chance of winning is only 5%. So if you have a criminal record, criminal background, you are likely to win. And you will become lawmaker. You become the lawmaker. Oh, and so it is a fact. Anybody can cross check. I, I don't talk about all these imaginary things. So in India, most of these guys with the yes, they engage in criminal activities. They become initially gangsters. And subsequently, these gangsters become politicians. Politician politics oh. is the best <laughs> route for that one. And now we have <coughs> many politicians, some of them are ministers also, who mm. with criminal track record. So I am not that is a I'm not I'm not going to blindly believe that is AS is bad because of this fact. This is also a fact mm. and a truth. Thank you. So are you saying, so what is your, what is your point? Are you saying we should, um, the, the criminals know better, or are you saying that you can choose which, where you want to go in your life? What, where are you going with, where would, should we take that? Okay. The good question. You're talking about the, you made a point that is in the schools, education system, they are teaching or addressing the left brain. They're neglecting ignoring right brain at least in usa they're not that? neglecting or because i'm in usa so in the schools yeah. they have music lessons they have the sports activity also they have all this is soccer volleyball basketball everything in india it is not like that okay. in india only yeah. left brain and these guys with the ace yes. they drop out they drop out from the schools. Most of these politicians, they don't even have. They are all high school or middle school dropouts. Then from the school of life, mm. they, that right brain, and they are very good psychology. They know the human psychology much better than the guys with all this formal education. And that is why they are very successful. Mm. They know how to. They mm. know how to they brainwash the people. So that is the secret. Mm. You get my point? So they get the right brain thinking skills from the school of life. The others, they get the left brain thinking okay. skills. It is not going to help much. Okay, okay uh, you, I'm with you on that. Yeah, but however, look, one more thing. However, if you, it, they're getting, they may be getting some right brain skills, but they're still not getting necessarily emotion uh, specific right training about let's talk about your fear let's talk about your sadness let's talk about your anger and your guilt and your shame and your depression and all that stuff that's a that's a specific right brain so you might be right that they're having more right brain education which is cool but i still say they're not getting much specific emotional training would you agree but but that is for the theory part but in real life in practical life they are more successful the question is, who is more successful? All these guys with the criminal track record or people with no criminal track record? We find people with the criminal track record, they are more powerful. They enjoy okay. life. That is the point. <laughs> okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Cool. Uh, anybody else? Uh, anybody else to share? Will I have a minute, sir? Uh, we get a minute, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, I would like to ask one question. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, sure. You're, you are telling uh, the solution for AC is developing EQ, right? Uh, I have a doubt. Uh, psychotherapies are needed. I hope uh, psychotherapies are also needed. Then, then only you can uh, apply uh, EQ. Uh, 
TCQ and all those things. What is your comment, sir? Uh, definitely, uh, definitely. I think one of the first steps to psychotherapy is knowing that you got a problem, right? Emotionally, and that's that's EQ. <laughs> that's the basis of EQ in the first place. Is that you got you you're aware that there's something not good, right? You're consciously incompetent, and then you yeah. go to therapy, and then you dig in deep. And so I think therapy fantastic absolutely we actually are just got a um wikipedia articles um approved just last week um on a new type of therapy there's cbt right we talked about this last time cbt is the most popular therapy we go in cognitive c-a-b-t cognitive affective behavioral therapy um adding more emotional to the side right and that is working beautifully it's fantastic Right. So therapy, definitely. And but wait, one more thing. If and we it doesn't you don't have to go to therapy to, to learn this stuff. I'll put it that way. You don't have to. Education can be therapeutic. Education can be therapeutic and therapy can be educational, of course. Right. But the education can be therapeutic. So I agree with you. I think therapy is a wonderful thing. I highly recommend it. And it's not required you can learn when i'm sad if i let myself cry ah oh, i feel a lot better ah huh? cool <laughs> i'll try that <laughs> anyway go ahead sorry what do you think yes sir your class was very nice and it was very much useful that is what i want to tell uh, first of all and the developing okay. eq is not a small thing you suggested that no uh, yeah it's a it's a very big thing and you suggested that it's uh, remarkable on your side yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I agree. And if, yeah. you can, if you can get to it and you can afford it or you or it's available to you, absolutely. Please take advantage of it. I do. I do. And I recommend it highly to, to, to everybody. If you can, if you can't do it anyway, you can do this work anyway. You can do it yourself at home by yourself, in my opinion. Uh, my contention was that uh... Uh, before doing after uh, after doing therapy only EQ can be applied like this. But uh, there are some few cases also uh, EQ can be directly applied also and it will be solved. Right on. Yeah. Thank you yep. for that. Thank yep. you for yep. your yep. class. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Uh, Shaji, uh, learn answer please. Learn answer. Shai sir will say. Learn answer. Um, sir. Congratulations. Hey, hello, hello. <laughs> Thanks, sir. So I feel that uh, <laughs> yeah. you are like a flowing river, throwing positiveness to both <laughs> bands. <laughs> and you are told that uh, <laughs> for ACE, the treatment is develop EQ. We are thinking about developing EQ you should apply psychotherapy, that is CBT, and behavior therapy too. I hope that uh, it will uh, create a better develop, better action against this uh, ACE. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. Shaji, sir, please. Uh, anyway, uh, Matt's presentation was wonderful. Uh, see, uh, so many traumatic experiences uh, our people go through. Naturally, uh, mm -hmm. so many negative things uh, happen in and around us. So emotional yep. uh, intelligence is very much necessary. Uh, earlier, we used to give more importance to cognitive skills or uh, intelligence quotient. Now, other uh, so many yeah. other quotients, spiritual quotient, emotional quotient, spirit, uh, prayer quotient, so many things are uh, now rising up and uh, as per the new uh, thoughts you know destiny uh, what is going to happen for us uh, is not to be left to chance so destiny it is said that destiny is not a matter of chance it's a matter of choice uh, and it is not something to be waited for it is something to be achieved so destiny uh, if we have uh, for our children our youngsters if they have a certain uh, traumatic experiences uh, by giving proper uh, solution in, by way of yoga, by way of prayer therapy, by other methods, 
so many things you know so many uh, we are discussing alternative systems adapting uh, all those things and uh, uh, we can try to reduce this kind of uh, come uh, to come out of this uh, traumatic experiences we can uh, nurture and practice all these things so it is getting more importance nowadays uh, so many uh, st still uh, the reality is that you know uh, youngsters are not able to realize it properly now in in uh, colleges also uh, they indulge in uh, recently in mandan college and uh, so many other colleges uh, they clash on petty things you know once uh, you know one party was in power uh, then another another group uh, com comes to power naturally uh, they mm. don't uh, they don't have uh, the real sanity to understand the scenario and to proceed like that anyway your mm. presentation is an insight into all these things uh, thank you sir very much mm. thank you yep my yes, creative heads kumar sir can you oh, share something yeah uh, good evening uh, mr match uh, i am kumar speaking to you from india yeah uh, it Hello. was a very very thoughtful uh, and very interesting talk from you and uh, i my few impressions are that you know emotional uh, emotional personality or emotional quotient as we as we understand uh, it has to be also read in relation to the socio socio fabric of the society i think uh, it uh, varies uh, from uh society to society from country to country where it interplays with the value systems yeah. and you know the whole fabric of it this is one thing and uh, i have been in the management science so i think that uh, apart from the intelligence which is iq uh, i think uh, we have uh, eq which is very important i think primarily eq is what makes a leader and perhaps uh, uh, than iq that's where the difference is but then i have also learned in my experience that more than all of that it's bit of pq that uh, takes you into the sus uh, sustaining sustaining level in the position be it be in politics or in positions of uh, responsibility now what is pq is political question that is what hmm. i wanted to put a different spectrum into the thoughts okay so hmm. there is some i never heard of that one before yeah interplay between eq and eq if we can bring out some mm. kind of uh, correlation positive correlation studies mm. that will be of interest to the society that's my input thank you great good so, point good point yeah i hadn't heard of pq that's good okay and definitely correlates yeah it's great. political question political question mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, sir. They're actually, okay. um, yes, yes. In, in the U.S., there's people that are fighting uh, in in um, in academic world in the U.S. At least, it's called social emotional learning, right? EQ in schools is called SEL, social emotional learning. That's what they call it. And there are people that are suing them that are fighting fighting it. I was like, how could you possibly fight the ability to know yourself? And they're saying yeah. that it's uh, racist and that they were trying to um, uh, control their mind by giving them uh, all this information, you know, like trying to uh, have some hidden agenda to it. And they're fighting it. And I was like, oh, are you kidding? You just look for stuff to fight about, it seems like to me. Uh, how can you fight a learning about yourself? But they're managing yeah. to do it. So <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. There are examples. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Rajesh, you, sir. sir. Thank you. Uh, Rajesh, sir, you can do. You can share, please. Uh, sorry, I was came almost at the end of the session. I could not oh. enter the session much. Uh, anyhow, I think you are trying to tell about controlling the emotions, which is necessary for the success in life. But when you are telling about emotions, most of us are telling fear. Uh, sadness, you can say a uh, kind of anxiety, everything. But nobody is telling, uh, telling about these sexual perversions. You know, watch, watching uh, porn films or indulging in sexual, uh, you can say, perversions like that. This also is an uh, emotional uh, problem. This also is to be controlled. Emotional, you know, 
I, I think that is a major one of the major problems in, in, in today. Most, most of the mm. people are watching uh, porn films yep. or indulging in such kinds of sexual perversions. Is it is it also a matter of controlling emotions? Yep. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it's <laughs> that's as almost i don't know it's almost pure emotion it doesn't make any logical sense of why you need to do something with somebody that doesn't want to do it and and to you have to fight their emotions and it's incredible so yeah we've worked with um with uh, molest and rape victims for 30 something years and perpetrators both both sides and it's all about emotions it's all about awareness and understanding what happened to them and almost every single one of the perpetrators had it happen to them first they have this as an ace score is that they were abused as a child and here they are doing it to somebody else they think that's what love looks like or that's what you're supposed to do or they've got some incredible impulses that are emotion based and so yeah it definitely 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 <laughs> it's ridiculously emotional Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else? Anybody? Uh, Jit sir, can you share something? Uh, anybody else? Uh, somebody has something to share? Uh, so otherwise you will stop. Anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a very good uh, process of uh, getting more EQ-based support. Basically in school and youth, it is very important. Uh, emotional caution or emotional uh, balance should be or response should be maintained uh, positively. So anyway, yeah. thank you very much for uh, your contributions on uh, EQ for Peace, emotional caution, and also uh, to this new field, adverse uh, childhood uh, problems. So in uh, everywhere in the world, it is there. Uh, always uh, childhood problems are there, not only in India, um, all developed countries everywhere. Huh? Yeah. is the yeah. but yeah. there should be some attention and moreover we have uh, some support is needed for these uh, children particularly in school schools uh, as you told uh, they have to identify their thoughts uh, they have to ask to watch their thoughts their feelings and similarly uh, they they have to include these senses and how to change these uh, thoughts feelings to a positive so really thankful to you. Uh, so the next week also we are expecting something. Uh, and I am requesting, uh, can you change the class to Sunday, next Sunday, not Saturday. Saturday there is a, at another person. Can you do it on Sunday? Sure, doesn't matter to me. Um, sure, yeah, we can do it next Saturday. Sunday, that's fine. Okay. Next Sunday, otherwise, uh, uh, thereafter we will do Saturday only because so thank you very much once That's again. Sunday is a big of... day. Sunday the twelfth. Sunday the twelfth is a big day. That's Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> but that's yeah, yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so once again, thank you. Uh, it's thank a very you. wonderful topic. So we are we are interested Thanks in getting more having... and more. Oh, good. It's helpful because I have to come up with a PowerPoint. To talk to you guys and so i have to spend the time thinking about this stuff and and getting it you know researching it and so it's helpful for me too so this is very fun we appreciate i appreciate you pushing me <laughs> thank you thank you sir so we are expecting uh, ray also uh, he's free you know ray ray, ray oh. Matthias. he's busy you know oh really okay um, i can ask him i can ask him okay you that'd be both, good okay both, that's good. Are different. Uh, both perspectives are a little different. Uh, so both way we can see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then yeah. we're going to do it on positive mental health then. Okay, because that's what sure, we're working yeah. on together. So, yeah, sure. okay. okay. Well, come up. So thank you. Thank you very much. For you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. See then. Thank you then. Bye all. See you. So good night. Good night. Okay, see you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.